Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we have come to rejoice and be glad in it. It is the second Sunday of Advent, that period of waiting and anticipation uh, where we celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ coming into the world. And this year, this week, we celebrate peace. And, and so as we prepare to read our Advent litany, uh, look into your Facebook and the comment section. I'm sure Sister Pam, Minister Pam has already put it there for us. The Advent season. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey Amen. Sorry, I had the Advent for last week. So peace, the second Sunday of Advent. We wake up every day in unpeace, broken situations, and social media confusion. We are facing violence in our communities, perpetuated by evil in high places, living between the evil of white supremacy and urban destruction. Hatred undergirds our thoughts. Guns are the defense mechanisms, and daily our families face threats of death. But in the midst of unpeace, we like the candle of Shalom. For Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Be not afraid. Peace is ever now. Now let's praise the Lord. Amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice together and be glad in it. Let's worship God this morning, amen?
with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. From all that dwell below the skies, let thy creator's praise arise. to keep God's law. God our salvation, only you are God. We will make no idols. We will not invoke with malice your name. O God, we will remember the seventh day and keep it holy. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for everything, Lord God.
your people, we your people, God. You know us, God. The, the ones that were dipped in the water, those that were sprinkled with the water, those that said that they would follow you. Oh, God, we come right now, Lord. We come as we are. We, we the ones that you found. We the ones that you cleaned up. Oh, God, we come right now, Lord. The, that word that only comes from you. Oh, God, that the anointing might fall fresh on this place, on this moment, in these people, in their hearts. Oh, God, right now, Lord. Lord, oh, heal us and teach us and preach to us, Lord, as you send the preacher. Oh, God, we pray right now. Oh, that they that have ears to hear, that they might hear what the Spirit of the Lord has in store for them. Oh, that they might be healed. Oh, that they might be delivered. Oh, that the captives may be set free. I pray, oh God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, that they might be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer and the people of God said, Amen. Oh, that mind that you got another 
Oh, change, change. That's what 2020 has been all about. Change. That's, that's what we have seen all this year. Changing medical directors, changing political landscape, changing attitudes about race, changes in our finances. I, I just stopped by today to remind you that if you're going to have some real peace in your life, oh, you're going to have to wait for the change. Well, you're going to have to wait for the change that only comes from God. In the midst of these perilous times, how are we going to have peace if we don't wait on the Lord? Oh, that's what the text screams at us. Uh, uh, but, but in this text, there always seems to be something else that's going on because the end of the beginning, amen, as we get ready for our change, amen, we got to understand that we got to set our sights on being prepared for the gospel. Oh, not for the gospel that we just heard but we're going to hear here today. Not just the good news that when we came to Christ, but I want you to know that the beginning that all of the gospels are the beginning of Jesus bringing the good news to all of the world, to all the land, not just to the Jew, but also to the Gentile, not just to the saint, but also to the sinner. That, that's what the good news, the beginning is all about. All the good news didn't begin with you just because you heard something good. It was here before you even came on the scene. Before you got into that situation, before you became successful, before you finished school, God had already begun preparing for you. That's the way that we have peace. God being with us while we wait. Waiting for our daily bread. Waiting for our change. Waiting for our healing. Yes, if you're going to have some peace in your life while you wait, you better make sure that you're waiting on the Lord. Amen. There's, there's too many other things. Up. I know the vaccine might help you, but I tell you, there's going to be nothing like waiting on the Lord. I know you might be waiting for your stimulus check to show up because a whole lot of people still haven't gotten them yet, but it ain't going to be nothing like waiting on the Lord. I know you can't wait to get back into the sanctuary, but I came to tell you today. That she ain't nothing like waiting on the Lord. That's why we wait on the Lord in season and out of season. And Psalm 27 tells us, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He coming, y'all. He didn't forget about you. Wait again, I say, on the Lord. Say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wait on the Lord. There's no substitute. There's no generic equivalent. There's no imitation. There's no one else but the Lord. But see, the other thing about the beginning is that your blessing is in the beginning. Oh, too many of us can't wait to get to the end of something. But I've got to let you know your blessing is in the beginning. And it's after the fact that most don't find out or what was going on. There's always something else going on. That's why they have a backstory. That's why there was some other stuff going on. See, you didn't know the inside track. Oh, baby, I'm telling you, there's always something else going on. But when you're with the Lord, that discernment that only comes from God will let you know what else is going on. Yeah, that's the point. That's why Genesis starts in the beginning. That's why the book talks about in the beginning of the gospel of peace. Oh, in the beginning, my brothers and my sisters, God was with you. In the beginning, when everybody was going against you, God was still with you. In the beginning, when they were telling you you wasn't going to be nothing, wasn't going to amount to nothing, God was with you. In the beginning is where your blessings are. So that's why you want to praise the Lord with all your heart, all your all your mind and to bless the Lord at all times. Say it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what gets you some peace. In the beginning, before the mess, during your test, when you think you've seen all the rest, oh, you better understand, it's just the beginning, baby. They thought they had you, but it's just the beginning. They dug the hole for you, but it's just the beginning. They set the trap for you, but it's just the beginning. Yes, yes. 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 
That's why the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Because in the beginning of the mess, you still hanging with the Lord. That's why we sing that hymn where peace like a river taketh my soul because the Lord is with you in the beginning. Oh, that's why you can have peace in the midst of the storm. Yes. Oh, because in the beginning, God is still there. Not only is God there, but the Spirit of God is there. Yes. That's why He soothes your doubts and calms your fears. And that's why we can have peace, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That we'll fear no evil because our God is so make sure you're waiting for the Lord in the beginning. But then this text goes on to tell us something interesting. Why you're waiting for your change. It says that John was in the wilderness baptizing. Repentance of forgiveness. You see, there was a lot that was going on. You see that John, the word said the folk were coming out of the city. They were coming out of their houses. They were going out into the countryside. They were going out into the wilderness. They were going out where the lions and the tigers and the bears were. They were going out where there was risk. They were going out from their comfort zone because something else was going on. The spirit of God was moving because it was the beginning. The beginning of what, Pastor? It was the beginning of the victory. Oh, and now you got to understand our beginning is the beginning of the victory. The beginning of the victory, that victory is mine. That's why the blood of Jesus continues to be all powerful because in the beginning, that's how we claim the victory because we always knew we was going to win the fight because our big brother Jesus was going to take him out. Say it. Yeah, yeah see. See, but there's a lot going on there. See, our rational, logical, and intellectual selves would ask, well, what's the right order? Do we for, do, do we repent? And then we get, but then we become forgiven? Or, or, or do we get baptized? And then that happens? See, that's the way we think as, 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 as humans. That's, that's, that's why our little pea brain imagination can only deal so much. I gotta go to the discipline. What the discipline say? I gotta go to the commentary. What the commentary say? I gotta make sure that I got it right and I'm in the right order. Well, I tell you, although 2 Corinthians 14 reminds us that we ought to do things decent and in order, I'm going to stop by to remind you that God is who puts things in order. And if you stop worrying about the order that that stuff came in, and you make sure that you continue to wait on the Lord who will put everything in order. That's what God said. That's God's job. Do you just come. You just come just as you are, and God will put it all in order. Won't he do it? He will see them do it in your life. You've seen them do it in this country. You've seen them do it in the church. You just keep on coming to the Lord and let God straighten it out. That's the problem. Too many of us want to think we got a corner on the market, but let God do what God do. Let God straighten it out. Because you can only do one thing at a time. But here it is. God can do it all at the same time. God can bless you going. And God can bless you coming. And God can bless you while you sit. And God can put this one down and bring that one up. And God can do it all at the same time. God is not limited by our physics, our geometry, our time frame. There is no limit on God. That's why he's omnipotent. That's why he's all power. That's why he's omnipresent. But he is God. He's in the back and he's in the front. He's in the past and he's in the future. He's on the side and he's above. You can't go nowhere without God being there. Say yes. I hope you know your blessings in the beginning. And don't you get limited by what comes first. Because as long as you come to God, 
God will work that out and put things in the right order. But it lasts for not this. Why are you waiting on your change? Oh, the word said, John reminded them that after him, there's one that's coming. There's one that's more powerful than him. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, that's the good news right there. I told you there's always something else that's going on. We got to learn to look at the word of God through the lens of God, with the spirit of God, and stop listening to what everybody else got to say. Because that's when you think it's over. After you think you lost, after you think you failed, after you think you quit, after you give it up, I got good news for you. What's the good news, Pastor? The good news is there's a blessing in the after. Oh, when you deal with God, there's always something that comes after. That's why we pray the so Lord. Some real 
change in your life, you must accept the invitation to initiate the change that comes from the good news so that you can be transformed. I realize these days you on all these news channels and they are all the rage. But I want you to know that CNN can't do nothing for you. I bet you can't even tell me what CNN means. <laughs> CBS, you might have a chance at that. ABC, <laughs> Fox News, and you, you don't even know hardly what they mean anymore. But the peacock may be beautiful, but oh, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel. Oh, when you start dealing with God, the uh, uh, fox is as sly as it can be, but God can let you discern what's going on. Oh, yeah. When our Jesus came, that's why we celebrate Advent. That's just a reminder for us. Hey Amen. I've been telling people that some folk think that this is the longest lift that we ever had. Some people say, what's wrong with the pastor? He don't know we got a lift. But I told you there's always something else going on. We're trying to move to the other seasons of the liturgical calendar. But God is saying, oh, not yet, baby. You still got a fast. You still need to be praying. You ain't still had your resurrection and your transformation yet. That's when the good news happens for each and every one of us. So as we as we've had a little bit to reflect on the peace of God while we wait on God. Wait for your change. There's something else going on. The beginning. They don't even know that there was a depression or a recession until after the thing is over. Then they start telling you when it actually happened. So I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, you be in your beginning. Don't get out of your feelings and understand whatever you're going through. It's the beginning. And then don't worry about what comes first. You just come to the Lord and God will work it out. And lastly, whatever you're going through, the after is what God is coming through for you. God bless you. It's my prayer. Yeah, James.
for communion. I pray those of you that were able to get by the church to get your elements, if you did, still make your way by here so that you can get your elements for next first Sunday. Amen. Amen. They are here waiting on you. And so, as I give you time to find your elements, amen, because I know there's somebody out there that came and, and there's a panic around the house right now that I know I had two and now I can only find one and y'all trying to get it together. I'm, I'm stalling for you to, just so you can get it together and then give you a moment to try to work to get that top cellophane layer off. Amen. Don't pull the foil back. Do that second. Amen. Go back to in the beginning was just the cellophane, which you can see through. Amen. You push the whole thing down. Amen. Push the foil down, and then the cellophane will come out. Amen. Hey, it's like that say that cream that rises to the top. You push the foil down in the wafer, the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It rises up for you. Amen. Amen. And then after that, we'll be able to partake in our blessed sacrament. Amen. Our solicitation. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take his holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling if you are able to do so. Our general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold sin, your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel, command us to continue 
a perpetual memory of that his precious death. Until it's coming again, hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who would the same night that he was betrayed? He took bread. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. Saying, take, eat, this is my body. Take the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, broken for you. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup, the cup of the blood of the Lamb that was shed for you and for me and for all those that believe. Saying, take it. Drink all of it. This is the blood of the New Testament. Shed for the remission of your sins. As often as you drink, do so in remembrance of him. And may it sustain both thy soul and thy body. Take it. Drink all of it. Having renewed your covenant for your change for your transformation, for the renewing of your strength to keep going on. Rise, my fathers and children, in the love of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. And the people said, Amen. We thank you all for worshiping with us today. You could have worshiped many other places. You probably worshiped some other places. Amen. Before you came here. Maybe you're going to some more places after this. But the joy of the Lord shall continue to be our strength. Amen. We thank our praise team. Amen. What a marvelous job that they've done. We thank you for our audio visual engineer. Amen. As he continues to work with little and make much of it. We thank God for each and every one of you. But most of all, we thank God for God. And for God being God all by him. So we thank you for the spirit of the Lord that has inhabited this place. And we pray that it will fill the temples of your heart. That it will fill your homes as you be filled going forth into this week. As we prepare for our doxology and benediction. Whatever you think is a situation, so that God.